Hey friends, welcome again in Pharmacology Insider by Dr. Nilay Solanki. Today we are going to discuss about Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease pharmacology. But before that, please do subscribe my channel for the further update. So let's get started. Now this Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease, they are under the category of the neurodegenerative disorder and the major pathophysiology involved in this two condition PD and AD that is protein misfolding. Now this native protein when with the help of external factor or mutation through external factor there is a misfolding of this protein occur inside the brain which is generating different types of monomers and oligomers. But when this oligomers they are converted into the insoluble aggregates and when they are deposited extracellularly and intracellularly they are producing the neurotoxicity and ultimately neuronal death which is generating the neurodegenerative condition. Now when this insoluble aggregates in case of Parkinson's disease it is converted into Levy bodies intracellularly which is called as a alpha synuclein protein deposition and ultimately generating the pathogenesis of Parkinsonism. While in, in case of Alzheimer's disease, these extracellular deposits, they are called as a amyloid precursor plaques or amyloid precursor protein as a beta amyloid protein. And intracellularly, they are called as a neurofibrinally tangles. And ultimately, both these deposits they are responsible for the neurotoxicity and ultimately neurodegeneration and neuronal death inside the brain in both the conditions. Now we are moving towards the individual conditions and their pharmacological drug targets. So first we are discussing about Parkinson's disease and drug targets and pharmacology. Now in Parkinson's disease there are two major areas of the brain which are affected corpus tritum and substantia nigra. Now this Parkinson's disease it is a progressive disorder of movement occur in the elderly patient. Inside the brain in corpus tritum and substantia nigra three important neurotransmitters which are involved where dopamine level goes down significantly inside the brain in this two important region corpus tritum and substantia nigra while in case of uh, the GABA and the acetylcholine level in the neocortex region they goes high due to deficiency of the dopamine and the symptoms associated with this Parkinson's disease are hypokinesia tremors at rest and muscle rigidity often with dementia and autonomic dysfunction. Now inside the brain in the substantia nigra and corpus tritum when tyrosine is converted into L-dopa and further converted into dopamine now this dopamine is act at postsynaptic region and at the specific receptor D1 and D2 receptor and some of the dopamine which is reuptaken back by the neuronal cell while the other dopamine which is converted into its metabolic products with the help of MAO enzyme and COMT enzyme. Now there are major drug targets that we are going to discuss which act in the periphery of the brain. The first drug target that is levodopa. Now levodopa it is a first line category of the drug for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Inside the brain in the periphery this levodopa is converted into dopamine with the help of dopa decarboxylase enzyme and it is further converted into 3m dopa with the help of comt enzyme but the overall efficacy of this levodopa is very low alone in the periphery but when it is given in combination with the carbidopa which is a dopa decarboxylase inhibitor their overall efficiency of the levodopa is increased and ultimately carbidopa reduces the dose of the levodopa tenfold and overall it improves the symptoms 
of Parkinson's disease. While in case of the other drug that is inhibiting the COMT, which is antecapon, which is acting in the periphery of the brain, and ultimately it improves the symptom associated with the Parkinson's disease. Now this leodopa, when it acts centrally inside the brain, when it crosses the blood-brain barrier, it is converted into the dopamine neurotransmitter, where this dopamine is converted into dopac with the help of mao B inhibitors. Now here there is a role of the another drug which is called as a mao B inhibitor, which are blocking the conversion of dopamine dopac. Example are salicylin and desagilin and thereby it increases the concentration of the dopamine in the neuron in the substantia nigra and corpus titum and thereby improves the symptoms. While the another class of the drug which is called as a telcapon which is acting peripherally as well as centrally which is inhibiting the COMT enzyme and further dopamine is not converted into 3MT which is the metabolite of the dopamine inside the brain and thereby improves the symptoms of PD while the another major class of the drugs used in the Parkinson's disease that is dopamine receptor agonist which are mainly targeting on D1 and D2 receptors now the first major class of the drug that is promocryptin which are called as a ergot derivatives. Now these are the plant derivatives which is having a limitation your class of the drugs which are available in this dopamine receptor agonist category that is Pramipexol, Rapinirol and Apomorphine they are also considered as the dopamine receptor and agonist drugs. So this is uh, overall about the Parkinson disease drug target and pharmacology and the common unwanted effects which is associated with this levodopa that is involuntary rhythm movement that is dyskinesia and rapid alteration in the clinical state. So this is about the overall picture of Parkinson's disease, drug targets and pharmacology. Now we are going to discuss about the Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease it is mainly a condition where there is a loss of the cholinergic neurons inside the hippocampal and frontal cortex of the brain. The major pathogenesis involved or the theory involved in the Alzheimer's disease formation that is amyloid precursor protein A beta 42 mainly and neurofibrinary tangles which is depositing the tau protein that leads to cognitive deficit and short term memory loss which are the major symptoms associated with the Alzheimer's disease. Now we are going to discuss about the drug targets and pharmacology of the drugs for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. The first one is cholinesterase inhibitors where inside the brain when acetylcholine is synthesized with the help of acetyl coenzyme A plus choline which is converting the acetylcholine neurotransmitter with the help of choline acetyl transferase which is the enzyme called as a CAT. Now this acetylcholine neurotransmitter when it is binding with its specific receptor site at the postsynaptic region but there are some components like ACHE which is called as a acetylcholinesterase and butyrylcholinesterase these are the two important enzymes which are responsible for the conversion of ACH into acetate and choline component so they are metabolizing this neurotransmitter into acetate and choline now the drugs which are targeting on this specific enzyme ACHE and BUCHE that is butyryl cholinesterase they are tacrine, donepezil, rivastigmine and galantamide. The overall amount of ACH remains at the site of action is increased and 
further conversion of acetate and choline is blocked by this drug. The major unwanted effects associated with this class of drug that is cholinergic side effects, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, hepatotoxicity is observed with the tacrine. While the second major class of the drug that is NMDA receptor antagonist where memantine is the drug which inhibition of the excitotoxicity in the brain which is the major villain. This is inhibited by memantine and ultimately it is moderate cognitive improvement and moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease can be improved by this drug and thereby the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease are improved that is cognitive deficit and short term memory loss improvement. Now these are the two major drug targets for Alzheimer's disease cholinesterase inhibitors and NMDA receptor in, uh, antagonists that we have discussed. Now other than this there are some future options which are under the clinical study which are as inhibitors of neurodegeneration like inhibitors of beta and gamma secretase enzyme, kinase inhibitors and now growth factors which are having a future options for this Alzheimer's disease condition. So with this we have discussed about the Parkinson's disease, its pathophysiology, drug targets and pharmacology and its treatment and we have discussed the Alzheimer's disease and its treatment profile. Thank you all. Please like, share and subscribe Pharmacology Insider for the further update.